Good morning. So good to be here. What a blessing it is to worship together today. What a blessing it is to be part of this church family. And God has been so good to us in the uh, last few years. We have seen this church just grow and we have seen so many new faces and people giving their lives to Jesus, babies being born, and just so many blessings and the great work of the Holy Spirit here among us. This is a different church from the church I met when I came here over 10 years ago. Some people have moved away, some people have moved in. Uh, again, people have uh, given their life to Jesus, but we have a church, a beautiful church, and I hope you are excited and to be part of what the Lord is doing here. And just to get an idea of how this church has been growing, I'm going to ask you to stand up when you see the year or the period of time where you first came to this church. Maybe you got baptized, or maybe you came as a visitor, or maybe you were born. Okay, because the kids, where are the kids? We're going to let everybody participate. If you see your, your year of birth there, just stand up, because maybe some of you were born in the church, or maybe your parents brought you here when you were a tiny one-year-old or two-year-old. So we want to just see how this church has been growing. So when you see the year that maybe you came for the first time, Please stand up and then look around and let's see how this church has been growing in the last few years. So if you were here at some point between 1975 and 2000, please stand up. Okay. Okay. That's good. By the way, 1975, is that, is that right? That's the, the year that this church was established here in Waterloo. How about if you were here sometime between 2001 and 2005. Please stand up. Okay, we're getting bigger. Okay, that's good. Look around, look around. We, we're not trying to know how old you are. <laughs> just, just to put it out there. If you were here at some point between 2006 and 2010, okay, how about 2011 and 2015? Oh my goodness. Okay, we're getting there. How about 2016 and 2020? Okay, here. If you came here at some point between 2021 and 2024, stand up. I hope you all are standing now. So just look around and see what a beautiful church family we have. Please be seated. And know that God has been doing great things among us. But as the church grows, so do the needs of the church and the serving opportunities that we have. Every time the church grows, the needs, the ministry opportunity, and the serving opportunity grow too. And we see that in the Bible. We see that happening in the church in the first century. We see that the Bible says that the church was growing, was growing so fast that there were different needs that needed some attention and some work. The Bible says, and we're going to read this passage today, Acts chapter 6, that the it says, but as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve called a meeting of all the believers. They said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God not running a food program. And so, brothers, select seven men who are well-respected and full of the spirit and wisdom. So we'll give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching the word. 
Everyone liked the idea, and they chose the uh, following man, Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Procurus, and Canaan, and Timon, and Parnaeus, and Nicholas of Antioch, an early convert to the Jewish faith. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. So we see the church was growing. The church was growing, and then we have needs. And this is just one example, right? pretty sure there were other needs that needed attention but this is just one example and we see that led by the Holy Spirit the, the apostles come up with this idea to establish to appoint seven men who will lead and serve in this capacity and that's just an example but a model for us to follow we see that happening now. As the church here in Waterloo has been growing, we have more need, we have more ministry opportunity, we have a place for you to serve, and we are trying to find those godly men willing to lead us as they serve. But please, make sure you pay attention to the detail, to this very important detail. They must be full full of the Holy Spirit. Not just intelligent, brilliant guys, or people, people person, or just charismatic guys. They must be full of the Holy Spirit. That's the most important, essential, critical qualification. So full of the Holy Spirit, but so, so, so full of the Holy Spirit that he this man is above reproach. He is a man that is faithful to his wife. He's lo he loves his wife as Jesus loves the church and gives his life for her. So full of the Holy Spirit that he exercises self-control. So full of the Holy Spirit that he lives wisely and has a good reputation. So whatever people say inside the church and outside the church about him is good and it honors God. People know him by his faith, his work for the Lord, his heart for service. He enjoys having people at his home. He loves God and loves people so much so that the doors of his house are always open to receive love and care for others. He's able to teach. And maybe not from this pulpit, maybe not every Sunday, but his heart is so full of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that every time you hear him speak, share thoughts with you, you are just encouraged. And everything he says glorifies God. And maybe he is not on our preaching schedule, but he's always sharing the message and the good news of the gospel with everybody around him. And the word of God comes naturally from through his mouth, from his heart. He's not heavy, he's not a heavy drinker, he's not violent, he's gentle, he lives in peace with everybody around him. He loves people, he's merciful, he's compassionate. He doesn't love money because he knows that God is his only God, the true God, and whatever he has and whatever God puts on his hands is just to be used for the kingdom. He manages his own family. He's a loving husband. He is a leader, a spiritual leader, a, a role model. He loves God so much that his family wants to be like him and wants to follow him and his example. So he is just a great influence in his family, in the church. His uh, children respect and obey him. Again, people outside the church speak well of him he's known by his love for God he's respected he has integrity he's not dis dishonest with money and he is committed to the faith so 
the Bible doesn't say that since we are going to just serve the table, just, just whatever you can find over there. It's just the table, right? Like serving the tables is not a big deal. That's not what the Bible says. Whoever wants to serve, whoever wants to take part in the work that God is doing in his kingdom and in his church must be full of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, it would be hard for you to serve God in a way that will please him and glorify him because we need to be in the spirit to serve our God. So, the apostle said, you go, recognize among you, give us a few names, people that are faithful Christians and are full of the Spirit. And that's what they did, and they appointed these seven deacons that were now in charge of the food distribution. Not because it's, it is way more important to preach the gospel than to serve the table. It is important. And you can glorify God and you can honor God doing any service within the church. Blessing the life of our church family and everybody around us. So what is a deacon? A deacon is a servant. A deacon is a mentor. A deacon is somebody who needs the church family. We need them. We need him. But they need us too. A deacon is a servant, and everything he does is to glorify and honor God. He's somebody that loves God and loves people that love the church, but he's somebody that is sensitive to the needs around him. He's somebody that loves serving, and serving is not a task or a job that we give him to do or to go do this. Service and serving is his life, is his lifestyle. He's not waiting for anybody to tell him what to do. He just sees the need. Oh, there's a need. There's a way to bless my brothers and sisters. There is a, a, a way to help people experience God's love and care, providing. He is just an imitator. He's just trying to imitate Jesus as our perfect, faithful servant, washing people's feet, feeding people, caring for those in need. So a deacon is a servant, a servant who inspires us. And we see him serving, and we want to be like him. We want to imitate his love for God and for God's people. He's somebody that's humble, loving, compassionate, that is being used to build God's kingdom on earth. He's somebody that once he identifies the need, he gets hands on and just love on people and serve them. These are men that play a crucial role in the life of our church and help us. They help us grow in our faith. He's a mentor and it means that he, do he doesn't have to do all the work by himself. He is somebody that invites along other members that also have the desire in their hearts to serve. He's a great influence for our youth, for our new believers, and for anybody within our church family that wants to put their gifts to use for the Lord. He offers guidance and support and encouragement to those that are willing and ready to serve. They develop meaningful relationships with those around him, knowing that when we serve together, we grow stronger. And we can have meaningful relationships. We can support each other in our faith. And we can glorify God all together. He is a mentor. He is a servant that invites others to come along. But he's also somebody that needs you, that needs us. Burnt out is the most common reason deacons step down. Sometimes we as a church 
family don't really understand the role that we have in keeping this man encouraged. Show them love and appreciation. And sometimes we become overly critical. And the only interaction that we might have with our deacon is to give them more work or just to complain about the work that they have been doing. So it's easy for them. They love God. And I've known several deacons through the years that no doubt they love the Lord, they love people, they want to serve, but they get so burned out and tired of so many different situations that they decide to step down and they keep serving because, again, serving is their life. That's what they do. They can't do anything different than that. They just serve, but now without that title or without that official recognition. And we play a crucial role in keeping this man of God encouraged. When was the last time that you approached one of our deacons and you thank them for what they have been doing? If you see our deacons that they are not serving in the same way that they used to do, if they're wandering away, if they are just distracted or, or too busy with worldly things that they are not using their gifts anymore, you go. Be an encouragement to them. Because yes, you are your brother's keeper. And we are here to support them, to follow them, and to serve alongside them. They need you in the same way we need them. And we have a, a responsibility before God to bless them, to care for them, and to love them. We are about to start to begin a process to identify men, godly men, men full of the Holy Spirit that can possibly lead our congregation as elders or deacons, servants, people that love God, people that love the church, people that love to serve, people that can be mentored, people that need us to love and care for them too. But that's a process that will need and require a lot of prayer and the guidance of the Holy Spirit because it's a serious business. So we need to be praying for that. We need to uh, be in prayer for those that might uh, come up as uh, elders or deacons now. And we need to support them and love them because everything they do is to bless our church and to bring glory and honor to God. Now Mike is gonna share with us a little bit about the process. What you should expect and 